Hey everybody. Today we're describing random variables with mean, variance, and standard deviation. Basically, we can describe the center and spread of a random variable much in the same way as we do with numerical data. For example, here's a discrete probability distribution. It corresponds to a situation where we've called up a bunch of people at random and asked them how many dinners they ate out in the previous week. So. Um, about 49% of the respondents said they had not eaten out in the past week, about 22% said they'd eaten out once, etc. I've also drawn the probability histogram. Even just looking at this, um, it's intuitive that we can talk about the center and the spread of this random variable. So let's get a little bit more specific and we'll return to this histogram in a little bit and try and interpret it, interpret our findings directly. The expected value or mean of a random variable is defined like this. Basically, take each of the values of the random variable, multiply, their prob by the, multiply them by their probabilities, and add up all those results. It's a weighted mean. This makes a lot more sense when we actually have an example in front of us. So back to that discrete probability distribution from the previous slide. I take the value 0, multiply it by the probability 0.49, plus the value 1 times the probability 0.22 plus on down the line. Take each of the values, multiply them by their probabilities, add them all up. Here we get 1.12. Tiny bit of notation. Um, the expected value or mean sometimes gets denoted mu. Sometimes we put in the, uh, the variable whose mean we're looking at, so mu sub x. This corresponds to our notation for the population mean for data. Not a coincidence. So expected value, or mean, measures the center of a random variable, and we can see that when we look at the histogram. Here we found the expected value is 1.12. Looking at the histogram, we can believe that that represents, in some sense, the center of the data. A bit more specifically, when we look at a probability histogram, the expected value represents the balancing point of the probability histogram. So you imagine putting a fulcrum underneath this graph at um, x equals 1.12, and the histogram should balance. What about spread? We measure the spread of a discrete random variable with variance and standard deviation. Here are the formulas. Fundamentally what we're doing with variance, we're taking each of the values minus the mean that we found, the expected value that we already found, and squaring it. So there we're measuring how far each individual value is away from that mean. The square makes everything positive, then we multiply that by the probability of that particular outcome to weight it. So things that are more likely get stronger weightings. And then we add up all of those different individual weighted variances to get the overall variance. Problem with that is that we've squared stuff, so variance won't be on the same scale, won't have the same units as our original data. If we want something with the same units, we need to take a square root, and that's the standard deviation. So here's the computation. It gets a little hairy. Usually you don't want to do this by hand. So again, the values of our variable were 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The expected value is 1.12. So for each of those um, outcomes, uh, each of those values that x can take, for example, 0, I subtract off the mean, 0 minus 1.12, square the result, and multiply by the corresponding probability. I add all that up, in this case, I get 2.19 for the variance. The standard deviation it then is 1.48. Standard deviation is measuring how far away results are from the mean on average. So if I'm imagining the mean of this random variable being 1.12, I imagine going out one standard deviation in either direction. Very, very, very roughly speaking, about two-thirds of the area under the probability histogram is going to be within one standard deviation of that expected value of that mean. So that's similar as for frequency distributions and, and frequency histograms as for random variables. Quick word about why we talk about variance and standard deviation, not just one or the other. So standard deviation is really nice because it's on the same scale. It has the same units as the original random variable. So it's easy to interpret. On the other hand, that square root is no fun. It adds um, additional calculation and it makes some of the theory harder as well. 
from the mathematical perspective, the variance is just much better behaved. And as you go further on in statistics, you find um, additional ways in which that's true. So we really do need both, the variance for the calculation and the theory, and the standard deviation for the interpretation. You don't really want to do a lot of these calculations by hand, particularly standard deviation. Even with that random variable that had a very small number of outcomes, the computation was already a mess. You want to use technology one way or another, um, more than just a hand calculator to do the, the products and the squares and so on. So here's how you do it in R. Of course, there's many different good technologies you can use here. I use R. So the first thing I'm doing is to code in the values uh, that the random variable could take. So x is being assigned the string of integers from 0 to 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then I'm coding the probabilities, a vector, including all those probabilities. I'll get the expected value by adding up all of the individual values that the random variable can take, x, times the corresponding probabilities, p. So x times p, sum it all up, expected value. Here we get that 1.12. I'm doing a similar thing with variance. So I'm going to take the different x values and subtract off the expected value, square it, multiply by the probability, add all that up. So the variance here with technology 2.1856. Finally, to get the standard deviation, I just take the square root of that and we get the same answer as before as you would expect.